And I remember being absolutely horror-stricken that the rapture, the thief in the night, had happened. Hello, and welcome to Spirit Travels, where we narrate the extraordinary experiences of people who have glimpsed the other side of death. My name is Maureen, and I will be your narrator on this journey. If you enjoy this content, please make sure to like and subscribe to support our channel. Now let's begin. Today's NDE is by Christine. On May 24, 2000, I experienced a car crash that they say should have killed me. I still don't remember the accident at all. I remember getting into my car but I do not remember pulling out of the driveway at all. I am told that the first thing I said to police was, what does ecstasy feel like? When I got to the hospital, I asked the doctor, what is a stigmata? I remember experiencing what I have now come to know as a near-death experience. There was a point when I knew that I was dead. I remember seeing car headlights and knowing that they were angels. I felt absolute, total, and complete ecstasy and an intense thankfulness that heaven was real, that I was eternal and would absolutely never die. I was hearing bits and pieces of music, thought I'd died and gone to heaven. I want to lay you down on a bed of roses, while tonight I sleep on a bed of nails. I want to be just as close as the Holy Ghost is. The experience is still very foggy in many ways for me. The intense, and it was so intense that I can't find strong enough words to describe it, feelings of ecstasy that I had, involved knowledge on every level that I would be one with my husband, Kevin, and with our children, families, and friends for all of eternity. I was so thankful to God that eternity was real. As I said, the feeling was so intense at one point that it was impossible to adequately describe, but that is the part where I knew that my husband and I would be together in heaven with our babies, friends, and families always, and that we would never feel any kind of pain again. I remember feeling Jesus actually feeling completely one with him, feeling like I had been literally crucified, as if he was. I saw an entire review of my life, but the birth of my children and my marriage to my husband were the most memorable. I felt absolute rapturous joy knowing that heaven was very real and it had never been a lie or a myth. Then all of my feelings of ecstasy were replaced by an unbearably intense fear. I was suddenly driving aimlessly in the car on dark, desolate roads, seeing nothing besides black alleys and a few scragglers here and there. Everywhere I looked, I saw Jesus Saves signs in neon red and churches, and I remember being absolutely horror-stricken that the rapture the thief in the night, had happened. My friends and family were gone and I was left behind to search for them. I remember knowing that the rapture had occurred and I was in hell on earth. I kept hearing the song, Highway to Hell, and trying to change the station, but my dial would not move. Then I remember hearing Ozzy Osbourne, See You on the Other Side, and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Take It On, the other side. And I remember waking up to the jaws of life trying to pry me out and bright lights shined in my eyes. I think I remember a comment about my pupils not looking right and I remember making myself become as aware as possible of what was going on around me. Everyone was sure I was drunk or on drugs. Neither. I was told my toxicology was clean, aside from a low amount of alcohol. The strangest part of the entire experience for me was that 
I remember waking up in different accident scenes involving myself. I have to include that none of these situations actually happened. The first time I came to, I remember being hysterical and demanding to know where my ex-husband was. The male paramedic told me, don't worry about him, they're taking care of him. He was dead and covered by a sheet. I started crying about how he ran me off the road, trying to kill me because he thought I was taking our daughter out of the country. A female paramedic shook her head, called him a son of a bee, and said, This is the kind of stuff that you read about in the papers every day. The next thing I remember is coming too. I was thinking that I was inside of our conversion van. The state trooper did tell my husband that I thought I was in a van, that my ex-husband had kidnapped me from my driveway and drove me to every single place he and I had ever shared together trying to convince me that I wanted him. I asked the paramedics, or police or whomever, where my ex-husband was, and they told me that I was alone in the car. I said the name of a specific church, which I cannot remember, and he said, Ma'am, you are a long way from there. And I could hear them speculating as to why I would be talking about this place. The next time I came to was the real scene, I do not remember asking the state trooper what ecstasy feels like. I remember hearing the machinery of them trying to get me out, the jaws of life. I remember beginning to hyperventilate, which is something I have done often in the past. The medic said to me, if you are a hyperventilator, we're going to have some problems. And I literally stopped right then and there. I remember crying for my husband and begging them to call him at work and telling them his number. I remember answering questions about who I was, where from, had I been drinking or shooting up heroin or cocaine, never in my life. I told them everything about myself and my husband, my social security number, birth date, age, name, kids' names, dad's name and telephone number, address, Please get my husband, I kept crying. I grabbed a handful of pictures of my children that I knew were in the console beside me, and I started pushing myself out of the car. I had no idea until days later that I was upside down. When I started to push my way out, they told me to stop, and I did not stop until they grabbed me by the arms and pulled me out onto the stretcher. I remember bits and pieces of the ambulance ride bits and pieces of arriving in the emergency room. I remember specifically asking about the stigmata when they x-rayed my right hand. They shaped it into the love sign, I thought, and I remember thinking, this was pretty odd. I kept thinking about the Immaculate Conception and the Crucifixion and the Last Temptation of Christ. I was asked to get on my own hospital bed, which I did. My stay in the hospital was very odd as well. I felt absolutely certain that I was in purgatory, that the rapture had occurred and I was just waiting for all my loved ones to come and be with me. I did not want to leave the hospital at all. They let me stay a day longer than I had to. They seemed to always know what I wanted or needed without me even having to press the call button. After they told me I could go home, when I was alone in my room, I cried and bawled because I didn't want to go. And less than five minutes later, a nurse came in and told me that I didn't have to go yet if I didn't want to, that I could stay overnight, and I did. I remember thinking that we were all telepathically connected. Many of my nurses commented to me that they were Libras also, and the same age as me. Every person looked familiar to me, and many told me that I looked familiar. I was afraid to leave because I thought someone might try to kill me. I asked if I was on the psychiatric floor, and she assured me that I was not, and that I would not be going there anytime soon. I immediately began writing with my broken hand when I got to my room. Some very strange and uncharacteristic things, especially anti-government things, and I repeatedly kept saying that the government as a whole is the Antichrist. I was also watching the news 
and seeing other accidents that had occurred for absolutely no reason. A semi-truck that jackknifed off the road for no visible reason. The driver had been killed. The most important information I remember coming back with is that all of us are completely one with God, each other and the planet, and the entire universe. The key to eternal life in heaven is unconditional love, acceptance, and forgiveness, the very entity of Jesus. And until we adopt a character and lifestyle consistent with Christ or love, we will not get into heaven. At the end of our life, though, we will all still be given every opportunity to make the right choice, the choice of Jesus and unconditional love for all people. Until we let go of our grudges, prejudices, and ill feelings, and replace them with love, compassion, and forgiveness, we will not be able to enter heaven. I wrote stuff about man-made products being poisonous, and that we must rely totally on natural products and remedies in order to be truly healthy. An important side note for me is that I have not taken any medication since the accident. I insisted that we are right now in the final days of revelations, that our hell on earth is beginning, and that the second coming is near. I actually thought it was here for about two entire days after my discharge from the hospital. It is my belief that the reason that I went through the hellish part of my NDE, as well as the ecstasy part, is because in my entire life, I have never believed that I was worthy of God's forgiveness. I've always believed in Jesus, but I have not ever had any faith that he would forgive my sins. I'm positive that is why I was put through the hell. And I know that I did not actually go to hell, ever. I was put through what I immediately deemed my own personal last temptation. Satan or another demon did everything in its power to turn me away from the beautiful ecstasy that I had just seconds ago been immersed in. It still frustrates me greatly not to be able to find adequate words to describe the feelings that I had when I first died and realized that I was far from dead. I was the most alive I had ever been. I do not remember seeing God or Jesus. What I felt had to be Him, though. I knew that what I was one with Jesus and God, just like the Bible says we are, that I was made in His image to be like Him. I knew that I was eternal and that God loved me unconditionally and would not ever turn His back on me or any of His children. I also knew that everyone, especially non-believers, would have every opportunity to choose to be with God. I have been confused as to why the demon that was in my car presenting itself as my ex-husband appeared to me after my ecstasy with Jesus. I can only figure that it was a last-ditch effort on Satan's part to get me to turn my back on all that I love. The car crash itself? I went eight feet airborne, split a telephone pole in half, went through the center of a billboard hit a tree and landed on the top side of the car, a 2000 Cavalier. I covered a 50 feet distance and did not have my seatbelt on. The troopers thought they'd be scraping me from the car. I was very much intact. My injuries totally consisted of a broken right hand, a twisted left pinky finger, cuts and contusions across my forehead hairline, cuts and contusions to the bottom of my feet, numerous horrible bruises all over my legs and a few on my arms, and I had a concussion. When I looked at the placement of my injuries, it didn't make me think about the crown of thorns and the hands and feet wounds that were inflicted on Christ. I read a lot on the subject, and it does not sound like a stigmatic experience, as the wounds were not spontaneous. But I remember lying in the CAT scan machine, knowing that I had been a stigmata and knowing that I was supposed to tell the world to prepare for the second coming of Christ because it was near. And when I had asked the doctor what a stigmata was, 
I know that I already knew the answer, so why did I ask? This experience has invigorated me, enlightened me, yet it has absolutely terrified me as well. Also, when I had left to go out that evening, I had a conversation with my five-year-old daughter about God. She was afraid to sleep in her two-year-old brother's room with a picture of God looking at her. She was afraid that God might see her doing something bad, and she didn't want to go to the devil. I assured her that she would never go to the devil, that she is a child of God and she would not ever be going to the devil. I told her that even if God did see her do something bad, he would forgive her if she asked to be forgiven and meant it. I told her that God loved her and would never send her to the devil just so long as she believed in him and in baby Jesus. And I let her sleep in her own room and went out to return my friend's license 20 minutes away and never made it there because I was wrecked an hour past her house because I made a left-hand turn on a road that I had known to go right on for the past five or more years. I also told her that I remember sitting on the porch showing her all the really cool heaven bracelets and anklets I had bought just hours before with the intention of giving them to my children and other children at a boat club that we were members of. I think it is also very important to mention that I was wearing two of these at the time of the crash, one that said heaven, that I have not removed, and one that said love, which I gave to my stepdaughter. What I wrote in the hospital is very fragmented and abstract as thoughts came to me. I might as well include some of it here. Rock and roll is not the evil. The world leaders are the evil. They don't want us to be one with God. They take away our right to pray. Well, we better start praying with all of our might right now, believe me. I am far from insane. Please believe me, please. We are the chosen ones. We are one with God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We die in three, and we are born in threes. No matter what we do, once we are saved, we will always be saved, and God will never turn his back on us, just like we have never totally turned our backs on each other. He will take us out of this world before he allows us to do anything to endanger our own souls. Once we're saved by love, we will all live together in perfect harmony. Satan cannot be allowed to stop us. He will not stop us. Good will prevail in the end. JD, my ex-husband, you will see Carla, his deceased sister, again soon. She's waiting for us. We were destined for something big. He always used to say he thought he was. All of us. Kevin, my husband, always trusts me to do what is right, and I will never lie to you or hurt you. You are my heart and soul. You are the love of my life, Kevin, my Superman, my kryptonite, and I am so amazed by you. You have to find the strength to believe in me and trust me even if you're afraid. Nothing will ever take you from me. You and I will be one for eternity, and we will have our ecstasy soon. Kevin, we never die, and neither will our love. Carla my ex-sister-in-law who was in a car crash in 1992 that left her in a vegetative state for more than three months, died, and we didn't get it. Jade, my daughter diagnosed with Wilms tumor at 10 months old, almost died, and we still didn't get it. Grandma died, and we started to get it. I almost died, and finally, we will get it. That's only some of what I wrote. Of course, my family and friends struggled with the thoughts that I'm totally crazy. My mental health professional has assured me that I am not. She instructed me to research NDE online and to keep in mind that I will never find the answers that I need in mainstream society. She told me that without a doubt, a higher power is speaking to me. I was told by one person that I was tripping on my own brain juices from the adrenaline rush of the crash itself. 
While that is a nice, cozy explanation, I know that it is not what happened to me. Of course, I was also asked if I was lying, as if I'd make up something so fanatical. I insisted that we are right now in the final days of Revelations, that our hell on earth is beginning and that our second coming is near. I actually thought it was here for about two entire days after my discharge from the hospital. I still do not remember the crash itself, and I've not obtained the full crash report or photos of the scene, but I will have them within the next few weeks. I do have two photos of my car that my husband took. Another important piece of this entire thing is that the night before the crash, a friend was in my car with me, and we were driving to see my husband at work. I totally kept missing the exits that I needed to get there. I drove a complete circle around where he works. We even saw the building from the expressway and I still did not go the right way until I totally focused on my friend and let her tell me exactly where to go. She went home and told her fiance how freaky I had been about not being able to get us there. Then the next night is when I crashed. Thank you for listening. If you have had an NDE that you would like to share, please email us at travelsinthespirit at gmail.com. Until next time, God bless.